chapter 6 verses 24 to 31 here's what it says and it happened after this that Ben-Hadad king of Syria gathered all his army and went up and besieged Samaria and there was a great famine in Samaria and indeed they besieged it until a donkey's head was sold for 80 shekels of silver and one fourth of a cab of dove droppings for five shekels or five shekels of silver that's ain't nobody going to the supermarket to buy no donkey head and doves dung it's hard times for these people then as the king of Israel was passing by on the wall a woman cried out to him saying help my lord O king and he said if the Lord does not help you, where can, where can I find help for you? From the threshing floor or from the wine press? He's saying, why are you calling to me for? I'm hungry too. And the king said to her, what is troubling you? And she answered, this woman said to me, give your son that we may eat him today. And we will eat my son tomorrow. Ah, yeah. So we boiled my son and ate him. Ka, you see what desperate times does to people? And I said to her on the next day, Give your son that we may eat him. But she has hidden her son. Because mama never raised no food. That's why. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Something like, this is just atrocious. <laughs> How can you find a joke in this, Pastor? Now it happened when the king heard the words of the woman that he tore his clothes and he passed by on the wall. The people looked and underneath he had sackcloth on his body. Verse 31. Then he said, God do so to me and more also. If the head of Elijah, Elisha, the son of Shaphat, remains on him today. I want to preach a sermon I've entitled, I'm Having a Bad Day. This sermon is to help you when you have a bad day. If you are having a bad day already, oh, thank you, Jesus, that you came to the house of God. If yesterday was a bad day, let me not, uh, I've been taking too long sometimes when I'm preaching. And there was silence. <laughs> Bill, Bill Withers is actually one of my favorite music artists uh, some of you know who he is I actually liked his songs before I knew that he wrote them he's written a lot of famous songs uh, one of them is uh, Lean On Me you know that song Lean On Me you know that song and then he has uh, Just The Two Of Us just the two of us. Yeah. Bill Withers, man, he was some track. My, one of my favorites, ain't no sunshine when she's gone. It's not warm when she's away. Hey! The brother said, it's dark and cold when she ain't here, you know. <laughs> this is my guy, man. And so he's written all these songs. One, one of the most notable ones is Lovely Day. You know the lyrics, when I wake up in the morning, love? And the sunlight hurts my eyes. And something without warning love bears heavy on my mind. Then I look at you. I sing this to my wife, man. And the world's all right with me. Oh, I'll tell you this, brother. Just one look at you. And I know it's going to be a lovely day. You know, he holds it saying, lovely day. Lo oh, my God. This brother had lyrics. God, he says, I just look at you. When I wake up in the morning, the sun's hurt my eyes. I got things on my mind. He's thinking it's going to be a bad day, but then he looks at his wife. Hope the man was married. <laughs> and he says, hey, man, it's going to be a good day today. You don't want to look at somebody and know it's going to be a dreadful day. Ah, <laughs> uh, there are a few things that give a sense of satisfaction more than looking forward to or looking back on a day that was a good day. You're looking forward to a day, you know, this, oh, this day is going to be a good day. And you live that day out, and, and at the conclusion of the day, you look back on it and say, what a wonderful day 
it has been. Praise God for good days. Hallelujah. Days when I'm productive, days when I accomplish what I have set out to do, for me, that is a good day. My wife often would ask me, how was your day? And if I got a lot of things done, I would say, yep, it was a good day. It was a productive day. It could be a day that you spent with your family and friends and you've done something with them that has brought enjoyment and has brought laughter and, and just good times and good vibes. Uh, it, it was a good day. Um, there could be uh, some kind of uh, joyous experience or occasion, the day you got married or the day you graduated or the day, of course, that you got saved or baptized, uh, uh, the day your children were born, uh, the day you achieved something, the day you celebrated something. Uh, it, was a, it was a good day. That's how you would conclude it. Uh, uh, it may even be more than a day that you're having that's good. It may just be a good season. Oh, thank God for good seasons. Where it's just like the days are just good. I'm just in a good season. I'm just good in myself. Things are going well. I'm just blessing God. Everything is great uh, in my life. We thank God for every good day. Brother Uche says in one of his poems that he is six foot tall on a good day. I want to ask him, how tall are you on a bad day? <laughs> I don't think you're six foot, brother. <laughs> anyway. Here's the other reality, is that sometimes we can have bad days. The Bible says in Psalms 118, 24, this is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Fred Hammer made some good record sales off of that one verse. But the reality is sometimes we wake up and we don't feel like it's a day that the Lord has made. That we will rejoice and we'll be glad in it. The Bible encourages us to enjoy the good days. So Ecclesiastes 8.15, so I command, commended, so I commended enjoyment because a, a man has nothing better under the sun than to eat, drink, and be merry, for this will remain with him in his labor all the days of his life, uh, which God gives him under the sun. It's like you have good days, be present in them, enjoy them, because not every day is a good one. That's the reality. There are good days in life, but there also are difficult ones. Ecclesiastes 7 and verse 14, In the day of prosperity be joyful, but in the day of adversity consider. Surely God has appointed the one as well as the other so that man can find out nothing that will come after him. Bad days are days where things do not go so well. Days of frustration, days of annoyance, days of difficulty. A day where you've experienced failure or some kind of hardship or even, dare I say, a tragedy. You've just gone somewhere, you parked up your car, you was there for seven minutes. You came out and that bright yellow sticker is right there looking at you. That right there just smashed up my whole day. Someone says something or they do something to you that rubs you the wrong way or offends you in some kind of way and... The day takes a turn for the worse. A day where nothing seems to be working out for you. Nothing's uh, seeming to go the way you expected it to. You've received some bad news. And all of a sudden, the day is deemed a bad one. We can see some of the greatest people, or we do see in the Bible, some of the greatest people, some of the greatest people of faith experienced bad days. You know, in Job chapter 1, verse 1, that God calls him a blameless and upright man. It's one thing you calling yourself a good person. It's one thing other people calling you a good person. But when God says, hey, Satan, Job is a blameless man. This guy's upright, you know. And after that, we know the book of Job that was over a couple of days, but that first day was, was a horrible one. They, Job went through a hard time. In a single day, lost everything that he had. The next day, his health was attacked. Here's a good guy. Here's a man of faith. Here's a man that God commends, but even he experienced a bad day. David had, King David, a man after God's own heart, he had bad days. You read through the Psalms, and there's times where you can see this guy is going through some difficulty. Joseph, on the day that he was sold to slavery, or the day that he was falsely accused and ended up in prison, 
These were bad days in his life. Everybody has bad days. Some of the most notable, the most influential, the most successful people, if you read their biographies, they detail of days where they wanted to quit, days where they wanted to give up, days when they had enough. Uh, it could be Abraham Lincoln or Nelson Mandela, Steve Jobs, uh, all of these people, even the founder of our fellowship. Uh, uh, he was at the age of 40 and he was about to quit. He, it was a bad time. It was a season where I'm just not... What I thought I was going to experience him with God, I'm just not experiencing it. It was, a, it was a bad day. This is a reality. And this is what we're seeing in our text. In our text, Samaria, which is the northern part of Israel, are going through a very severe famine. And this is because the king of Syria has besieged their city, locked them in. No one's coming in, nothing's coming out. And so food is going to begin to deplete. And so they're in that famine, and so these are hard times. The Bible says the king is passing by on the wall. He hears this news from these two women, which we read of. One, they boiled one son, they ate the son, and then they were going to eat the other one. And, and that one was hidden, and this woman's bringing this petition to the king. And he's what, this is what he meant to do. Go on, okay, woman, let's go and find your son. Let's boil him and eat him. I mean, this is just insane. And the king's outward expression of renting his clothes is really how he feels inside of his heart because of how his people are suffering. And so he's in a bad season, but then hearing this news here has brought about a real bad and dark day in his life. The circumstance of the season combined with this moment has tipped him over the edge. The king is having a bad day. And what is his response? Let's consider it in verse 31. The Bible says this. Then he said, God do so to me and more also, if the head of Elisha, the son of Shaphat, remains on him today. I'm having a bad day. What is my response to me having a bad day? is I'm going to take it out on someone else. Many times when we, everybody say we, that includes all of us, all right. When you and I are having a bad day, you go to work, you look at your manager's face, you look at your colleague's face, and it's a bad day. <laughs> then you look at the clock, and you just wait for the hour where you can go home to come. And so something happens, something is said to you, something is done, or whatever it may be, you're having a bad day. But this bad day experience happened outside the house. Maybe you was planned the day you was going to spend it with your sister. I don't know why I'm saying sisters, but you know how sisters be. And something happened, and she said something stupid. That happened outside. Here's what we do. We come home. And God forbid... Someone else is in the house whilst you're having a bad day. Let them do the smallest of thing to offend you. And what do you do? You explode on them because you're having a bad day. This is what the king's doing. The king sees the situation. What has Elisha the prophet got to do with these two women? <laughs> this is their own idea, their own issue. But his, his thing is Elisha. So we come back, and often it is those closest to us. It is our spouse. It is our children. It is people that we are close to that are in proximity of us when we're having our bad day that normally, normally feel the brunt of it. Cain killed his brother Abel. You know what he was doing, Really? is he was having a bad day and he was taking it out on his brother. He offered up his sacrifice. It didn't meet the standard. God even comes to him and says, hey, if you do good, will you not be accepted? Come on, man, it's okay. We can, we can get through this. But Cain's vex. His countenance is falling. I'm having a bad day. And I don't know how it happened, 
But maybe Abel was like, did you see how God responded to my offering? <laughs> bro, you need to step up, man. You need to step up, bro, man. I don't know what you said. Give me the fruit of the veg. Come on, you know it's a sacrifice, man. The blood sacrifice, bro. And all of a sudden, he started looking at him. And Cain, Cain is getting upset. Fruit of the man is dead. He's taking his bad day out on his brother. How many have felt the wrath of our bad days? You're just miserable. Some of you are like me, you enjoy it. <laughs> Let me just back up there. The Bible says this in Ephesians 4, 26 to 27. Be angry and do not. You can have a bad day. Ain't nobody saying you can't have a bad day. You can't be upset about something. But the Bible says do not sin. Do not let the sun go down. Oh, this is good. This is good. This is good. Do not let the sun go down on your wrath. Let the bad day, that's one singular day, be just a bad day. Don't make it into a bad week and a bad month because you're still angry about something. I'm, I'm trying to preach the Bible to you. Nor give place to the devil because the scripture understands that the devil likes to traffic in offenses. When you're in that mood, when you've got that, that, that spirit of antagonism and conflict on you, the enemy comes next to you and makes a lot of sense. Talks to you like he's your best friend. Many people have the wrong responses when it comes to having a bad day. A North Carolina pastor, this saddens me, was arrested. It's never good when a pastor gets arrested. This is following an altercation with a McDonald's employee. I wanted a double cheeseburger. <laughs> no, no, I mean, queen. <laughs> Sorry, guys. Sorry. Oh, seriously, man. I'm, I think I'm, uh, yeah, I am turning 40 this year. I'll grow up one day. In which he allegedly attempted to shove the worker's head in the restaurant's deep fryer. Fry him like an apple pie. After punching him in the face multiple times, pasta. According to police report, so obviously the police turned up. Here's the story: the pastor's wife was training to be a manager when employees began disrespecting her, and she subsequently called her husband for assistance. Don't be messing with the pastor's wife, man. <laughs> Don't be messing with the pastor's wife. He'll do something to you. <laughs> Man loses salvation, go prison, everything. Mess with disrespect to my wife. The pastor reportedly went to the McDonald's location to assist his wife. When he arrived, arrived, he went behind the service counter, walked to one of the cooks, placed his hands around the neck of the victim, pushing his head. I'll fry your head, boy. Mess with my wife. <laughs> You think because I was a pastor, I won't do this to you? <laughs> I've been doing this too much. <laughs> the offender also punched the victim several times in the face and did not stop until several employees pulled the pastor off the victim. You've got to pray for your pastor, man. <laughs> oh, my days. So I'm reading this. This story came up on this Christian news website. I'm like, oh, man, this is terrible. But here was my assumption. That brother's going through a rough season in life in ministry, man. That brother must have been having a real bad day. And once he got that phone call, and then he turned up to that place, and he sees these employees disrespecting his wife, it was the straw that broke the camel's back. And he let all that frustration out on this individual. He's probably never seen until that very moment. Come, on, it's not warranted. Come on, man. It's like he forgot. He, he forgot the devil got inside the individual. Then was like, "Yeah, man, what are you gonna do? Yeah, yeah, your your fat wife, man. She trying to tell me that. Like, what you call my wife? What, what? <laughs> Into the deep fryer." <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, guys. It could have looked like that. I don't know. Maybe we might have said he's tripping. He's so red. 
The Bible says we wrestle not against flesh and blood. I'm sure the pastor knows it. But this is what I'm saying. When you're angry, you're having a bad day and all of this kind of stuff. I'm saying the devil will get inside people and inspire words and actions to trip you over the head. It's important how you respond when you're having a bad day. We end up doing things and saying things that often can make the day a lot worse. And we do it feeling justified. Having a bad day does not justify you. Sometimes we are. We're mean, we're horrible, we're grumpy. And then that's our kind of apology, isn't it? Yeah, I'm sorry. I was just having a bad day. It is not a justifier. I read this, this story of this guy. He, he's getting sentenced. And then he runs up to the judge. Superman jumps over her desk. Did you see that? Like, Bro, if you, if we, you mad at her? Because she's sentencing you for a crime you committed? Don't commit the crime. Yeah, all right. You know what his reason was? I was having a bad day. Sure he was having a bad day. He was about to get sentenced to prison. Everybody getting sentenced to prison is having a bad day. But somehow that justified it. But it made his day worse. James 1, 19 and 20. Consider the wisdom of the word of God here. It says this. So then, my beloved brethren, let every man... Be swift to hear. No, we've got to stop. We can't just read that and just carry on reading. Quick to hear. Sometimes we are very slow to hear. You know when you're in a dispute, you ain't hear nothing. You ain't hear nothing. 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 Rah, 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 rah. You, just got, you just know what you want to say. And you better, and the only thing, you, when it comes to listening, what it matters is that you're listening to me. You're not listening to me. Well, you ain't listening either. But the Bible's teaching us something here. It says, hey, 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 be swift to hear, slow, slow to speak. Don't swap them around. Swift to hear, slow to speak, slow to wrath. Now look at the next verse. This is what it underlines it with. For the wrath of man does not produce the righteousness of God. You are not at your best when you've lost all control. That's where a lot of your regrets come from. That's where you do things and you say things that are way lower than who you truly are in Christ. If we act out according to how that day is making us feel, we can make things even worse. And so what I've given you in a way is I've given you a couple of extroverted responses. You lash out, you get angry, some of you throw things. Please stop doing that. That is so dangerous. But anyway, some of us, language comes out that's not heavenly. You know how tongues is a heavenly language? There's, there's, a, <coughs> there's a dark, <coughs> words that should not be uttered, okay? This comes out, bad day, having a bad day. We blame and say, what else is for? All this, okay. But that's the extrovert. Or you can say, maybe sometimes you have people like this and they're one way at home, one way at home. But that's more of the extroverted, expressionate uh, thing. You also have introverted responses to a bad day. Some of us, we become depressed or we begin to slip into a depression. Because in our minds, we, we, the introvert doesn't say anything. They hold it all inside. They, 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 their communion is within themselves. Their conversation was within. It's never, they don't really, they don't talk about things. And the conversation in themselves is that it's always going to be like this. They assume the bad season and the bad day is going to become a bad life. Or they process everything through the difficulty that they are struggling and they begin to underline and and title their lives as my life is hard, nothing goes my way. They bring these kind of titles over their lives. The prophet Elijah, the Bible says um, that he has this amazing day where he has this standoff with these, these, these 400 prophets of Baal. So Israel, the nation of Israel is not worshipping God anymore. They're worshipping idols and they have all their false prophets and all that stuff going on. 
And so Elijah is a man of God. And Elijah says, okay, if your gods are real, right, we're going to have a little standoff. And you're going to call it to your gods. And if fire comes down from heaven and consumes the sacrifice, then we know, hey, Baal is God. But if Yahweh, if God is God, then, hey, he's going to answer with fire. So he has the standoff. Long story short, they're crying all day, cutting themselves, doing all kind of stuff. And Elijah starts mocking him. Maybe he's asleep. Cry loud. I can't hear you. Elijah's funny, right? And then Elijah's like, okay, my turn. You guys finished? They don't know. We're done. So, okay. And then he digs a moat around the sacrifice. He gets the water. He drenches it because he's showing them. They say, no, witchcraft's not here. We're going to drench the sacrifice to the point where the moat around it is filled with water. He prays to God. God answers with the fire, consumes the sacrifice, the wood, and the water. The place is left dry afterwards. Everyone is like, the Lord, he is God. The Lord, he is God. I mean, he's powerful. Elijah, one man, you got 400 prophets of Baal. And at the beginning, the crowd would have been sided with the prophets of Baal. And by the end, he's, oh, and it was like, oh, the Lord, he's God. That man are looking like, oh, man, like, this. it was a great day for the prophet. I mean, he's the only one who's living for God, man. You know, like, you've been in a context where you're the only one. In your workplace or college or wherever, you're the one in your house. You're the only one. And everyone's just mocking and mocking and mocking. And God just shows out and everyone shuts up. Ah, it's a good day, man. Got the minions. Like, hey, it's good. <laughs> and so um, he deals with these prophets of Baal. And then Jezebel, she has a way with people. And she sends a message to Elijah and says, oh, you think you're bad? You having a good day, are you? Oh, okay. She says, well, since today was so great, by the time tomorrow, you're going to find yourself to be a dead man. And so this is what I like. So the man has just stood far from heaven, having a great day. Then she sends him this message. His response is this in 1 Kings 19.4. Now, here's where you've got to learn about Elijah. Elijah had um, a, a bit of a, um, a melancholic type personality. He's an he's a introvert. He's always by himself. That's why even they like that moment, because it's me one by myself in a way. Um, he had an assistant, but you can see even when he, he called, when God calls him to kind of disciple Elisha, it's, it's very weird. They have an awkward relationship. And so the Bible says this, First Kings 19, 4, but he himself, by himself, the Bible makes that clear. He actually had an assistant. He drops the assistant off. Some people, when they go through tough times, that's what they do. They isolate. I just want to be by myself. I'm going through things right now. It's a tough time. You ain't going to see me. You ain't going to hear me because we know. That's how we know you're going through it. It's the introverted response. He went a day's journey into the wilderness and came and sat down under a broom tree. And now he's communing, communing and conversating within himself. And he prayed. He ain't really praying to God. He's talking to himself that he might die. And said, it is enough now. Lord, take my life for I am no better than my father's. So what he does is this bad day takes him into a very, very dark, depressive state. At the end of that day, the prophet wanted to conclude his life. Because his conclusion is that the bad, end, bad day would never end. It wouldn't change. We could also start to blame. And again, this is a more introvert. This is not an extrovert uh, thing. We, we, we can start to blame God. I know no one's here has ever done that <laughs> ever in their life. But you, you, you can... Sorry, man. It's lemon and honey, man. This thing's ministering to me. And so... You, you, can, uh, you can start within yourself. Within yourself. You never vocalize it. You blame your mom. You blame your dad. You blame this person. You blame the church. You blame, 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 blame. I'm by myself. I isolate. I get into this depressive state. And then I, I just start to blame everybody and everything. I was talking to my friend. And uh, he was telling me how he was going on a holiday uh, to Turkey. But there was a problem because when he handed over his passports to the person, you know, you check in. Okay, hands over the passport. There's five of them. They go with four. They scan four, fine, and then the fifth one. I go, and the woman walks away with it. And then she, no, 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 no. And she comes back, and she goes, "Sorry, but your son can't go on holiday because there's only five months remaining on his passport." So there, you like, you pay for the holiday, you pay for the car, you pay for the flights, you pay for everything, and now. The little boy can't go. I told him, I just would have been like, easy. Pick up the phone. Hey, can you just watch? <laughs> Roll me back. <laughs> I wouldn't, I wouldn't, I wouldn't. I wouldn't do that. 
I would just say, all right, all you guys can't go. I'll just go by myself. We don't want to waste the money. <laughs> At least someone goes. <laughs> I wouldn't do that either. I wouldn't do that either. But these things just come into my mind. <laughs> what would you do in that situation, Leo? Like, mm, all right, one of us will go. And I have a, if we put all the seats together, it'd be amazing because I just lie out. If, I'll be like, I have all of their meals. <laughs> like, yeah, I mean, give me, give me, it's all right. Anyway, and so he's there, and uh, long story short, you know, he, he ends, they end up going by the grace, by a miracle of God, they actually end up going. Because uh, he's calling up the, um, the, the embassy in Turkey. They're like, we can't change the law for you. <laughs> Hang up. And then if any time's running out, and the lady's like, if this doesn't get sorted within the next like 15 minutes, they send an email because they, if they put them on a the flight, then they get fined for doing that. So they send an email to try and clear themselves. They still haven't responded to it, and all of this kind of stuff. And then, long story short, it's like God sent an angel. He said there was this guy with a linyard. The woman spoke to him because we we're just sitting there like praying, like, oh. And he just looked at them and was like, okay, yeah, yeah, just go on the flight. And they like ran and they got on the flight. It's like, who was this man? Who had the authority to just say, go on the flight? They got there, they pay like an emergency visa, they get into the country. So, so that's the end of the story. But he told me when I was in there, he said, I was praying, God, why is this happening to us? <laughs> we haven't been on a holiday in ages. We set this, we planned this. Lord, why don't you tell me? Why don't you make the high, why don't you just highlight that passport before to make me want to? And I was like, you are a choker. I was like, you cannot be serious. You're blaming God. I'm like, dude, you should have checked. <laughs> and just renewed the pop. But that's your, it's your fault. Because I know, but at the time. <laughs> and then you got the kids praying. He goes, God, are you really going to disappoint these children? <laughs> They're praying to you, Lord. <laughs> like, are we really going to be doing this and go home? <laughs> I was like, dude, I see, this is why I'm not God. Because I just would have, ah, uh, I would have slapped you. I would have, I would have, I would have come back then. That would have been a rapture right there. I would have taken, and I would have taken your wife and your kids and left you for about six months, like blaming me. You're not serious. But when we're in this difficult spot, it's what we do within ourselves. And many times, going through difficult times can affect our relationship with God. We can give up believing and having faith in Him, that He is who He declares He to be declares to be in verse 33 it says and while he was still talking there was a messenger coming down to him then the king said surely this calamity is from the lord why shall i wait for the lord any longer he's given up on god he's lost the plot he's blaming he's lashing out he's taking it out on other people uh, um, he's making regretful decisions he feels justified in it he's losing his faith because the king is going for a bad season and he's, he's just had a really bad day. The word of the Lord through the prophet is actually found in 2 Kings 7 and verse 1. For the Bible says, Then Elisha said, Hear the word of the Lord. Thus says the Lord. Oh, that word read good to me. What's he say? Tomorrow. So, so I said, I know today's bad. I know you're in a hard time today. But thank God there's a tomorrow. He says, tomorrow about this time. So he's like giving it 24 hours exactly. A seer of fine flour. We ain't talking about no donkey's head no more. Shall be sold for a shekel. And two seers of barley for a shekel at the gate of Samaria. In a single day, everything is going to change. God can change your circumstance. And he only even needs but a day to do it. And your season can change just like that in a moment. You know, through the creation account, uh, God compartmentalized time into days. Genesis 1 verse 3 says this. And God said, let there be light, and there was light. And God saw the light, that it was good, and God divided the light from the darkness. God called the light day and the darkness he called night. So the evening and the morning were the first day. So we know there's divisions of time, months, weeks, seconds, hundredth of a second, all of that. But the initial division of time that we get in scripture is the day. The 24-hour day. What God is teaching us is that days end. And new days begin. One of the first lessons we see in the creation account. If you're studying it, you're like, what am I learning from this? That was the first 
day it started and it ended. And what happened? And then God made on the second day. There was another day after that. The Bible says that what? Weeping may endure for a night, but joy comes in the morning. That days end and new days begin. His mercies are new every every morning. It's like every new day I have new mercy for you. That's when last week we were talking about tomorrow has enough trouble of its own. Days are distinct. They're different. And so you can't live and process your life through how you're feeling today. Yes, we may have bad days, times of weakness, temptation, times of struggle, but they, they come to an end. How do they come to an end? I believe they come, I believe, I know. I know they come to an end through Jesus. Now, now, can I show you why I really know that? Sometimes you can just say that as a preacher. Because of Jesus! And everyone goes, hey man, well, yeah. I'm sure Jesus can do it. But, but you've got to check this. In Luke 1, 78-79, now, this is Zacharias, right? This is the priest. And, and this is when Jesus is a little bit older and, and they bring him to the temple. Do you remember when they bring him? And they've got to give a sacrifice and all this kind of stuff. This is the ritual of a, of a new Jewish boy being born. And they bring him, but he, he realizes and, and he begins to prophesy over the child um, that, yeah, this is the Messiah. And so here's what he says. He says, through the tender mercy of our God, with which the day spring, the new day, from on high has visited us. Oh, that's good. He's calling Jesus the new day. Or in the New King James, it says the day spring. The new day from on high has visited us. To do what? To give, oh, it sounds so good because it is so good. To give light, to give light to those who sit in darkness and the shadow of the. God looks down and he says, man, people are going for a rough time. Some hard days, man difficult seasons and so he says man what they need is a new day what they need is good mercy tender mercies i need to show them the embodiment of what it means that my mercies are new every morning i need to bring light into their darkness so that's what a new day is it's light coming into darkness we go to bed it's dark new day light comes this is jesus jesus is the embodiment of this and god says i will come down to give light to those who sit in darkness and the shadow that those who are going through a hard time. To guide their feet into the way of peace. Jesus is the light that vanquishes the darkness. He brings darkness to an end. He brings sorrow to an end. And he brings joy and he brings forth glory. Jeremiah 29 verse 11. For I know the thoughts that I think toward you, says the Lord. Thoughts of peace and not of evil to give you a future and a hope. That word is prophesied whilst the people are captive in Babylon. They're not having a good day. But God says my thoughts towards you are to give you a future and hope. It doesn't last forever. And so how we get through through bad days. Oh, I'm going to take my time this morning if you don't mind. Okay, I'll try and be a bit quick. I felt that. I felt it. It was like, well, you don't have to. Okay, I will. Here's how we get through it. Is you got to realize, and hopefully you've already got this, that it's just a day. It's just a season. I was speaking to an old friend of mine. He lives in, he lives in the States. He's in Florida. And he's given his heart to Christ. He lives for God. And me and him just... Back in the day, we're reminiscing, we're talking about things. But I remember, it's something that was always on his mouth. He was learning, it's just a season. He's telling me about some things, and that's how he's processing it. Like, it's just a season, man. He says, they start, they come, they go. And, I've, and, he, and he was so mature because he was like, I've had many good seasons. He says, God's been really good to me. He says, what I'm facing right now, it's just a season. It's just a day. But every day comes to an end, and a new day comes forth. Sometimes you need to tell yourself this when you're going through things. It's just a day. That is like my number one encouragement when I'm counseling someone who is going through something that's quite traumatic and very distressful. I ask them, I look them in their eye and I said, can you get through today? And if they can give me a nod, so I can do today. I said, that's all you need to do then. Let's just make it to the end of today. So they're like, tomorrow on the weekend. And I'm like, no, no, we're not interested in that. Because you don't have that. 
We just need you, and we need God to get you through today. I just need you to get fruit, eat, go to your bed, try and sleep tonight, and wake up tomorrow. And if they ask me, so what are we going to do tomorrow? I say, we're going to get through that day too. And we're going to do this one day at a time. And you know what I see? I see God bring people out of the darkness because he is that glorious light. And he brings them into new days. So much so that they actually forget how they were in the dark day. This is the God that we serve. The Bible says in Hebrews 12 verse 2, Looking unto Jesus, the author and finish of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and he sat down and had sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. So you've got to consider what's happening here. It's speaking about his suffering, his crucifixion, which is like the worst day ever. Like you have a bad day. Have you ever seen that little meme thing with uh, Mel Gibson when he was directing The Passion of the Christ? And you've got Jim Caviezel. He's all like makeup top. He's got all the blood coming down his face. He's got the crown of thorns. And that guy was actually suffering and portraying Christ. Like you should, there's actually a, a, even a documentary about how much he literally suffered portraying the suffering of Christ. Like, because, you know, they whip him. Like one of them actually whipped him. Like, and like the guy, so he got electrocuted, all kind of stuff was happening. And so he's there, and he's got all the blood dripping, and, blah, 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 and then Mel gives to sit next to him, and he's kind of talking to him. It's a snapshot. And it's like, yeah, me trying to explain to Jesus my problems. You know, like, I'm having a really bad day. Like, oh, really? <laughs> it's not worse than my bad day. He was able to get through it, for the Bible says the joy that was set before him. He was able to see through it and past it and beyond it. On, on Wednesday night, I was speaking about how there is a sovereign narrative. I'm going to bring this to a conclusion. There's a sovereign narrative, God's narrative. And so I say the world is objective, physical material, but it, the world is also um, functioning on a story, a, a narrative. As in, you can look back on your life and it tells a story. I was born here. and You're not just like physical matter, just floating in space. I know you learned that in school, but you're more than that. You have life experiences, you have emotions, you have feelings. This is okay. So, so God has his narrative, and we read it through the Bible. And what we read is we read that there are highs and there are lows. There's good days and, and there's bad days. There's good times and there's more difficult times. When we read it in hindsight, we can see God. Oh, yeah, this is what God is doing. He always, we, we just read the, the Israelites were in slavery for 400 years. But God's going to set them free. Okay, all right. That's still 400 years. Right? So we read it in hindsight and we can see God. We can see God as we read through the scriptures, especially through the darkest uh, periods. But these people were living it. They didn't have the end of the story. They were just in that moment. Just as you are in your moment, or whenever you are in a moment, you don't see, oh, well, you know, you're just in it. So I'm having a tough time, man. I'm just dealing with this. I've got this going on in my family. This person's sick. This is going on. This person's, these, this family's marriage is breaking up. All this kind of, and you're just, you're just in the moment. And it's often as we go through it, and many times what God would take us out of it, that we look back in hindsight, and we could say, oh, man, God really helped us. God got me through. God protected. God provided me. I see the narrative of God. In, in the moment, I couldn't see it. But looking back, I, I can see God. Now, anyone can look back and tell the story. Faith is something special. Because you know what faith can do? It looks forward whilst you're in it. And saying, God's going to help me. God's going to get me out of this. I know this is a bad day, but... Hey, mercies are new every morning. I know that this is just a season. I know how I feel in this moment, but it is not the conclusion of the matter. Why? Because I serve God. And God brings light into darkness. And so he's going to lead me in the way. Faith has an ability to tell the story forward. This is what the prophet is doing tomorrow. Everybody can look back. They're in the moment. Everyone's still hungry, you know. And he says, tomorrow. I'm going to show you what God is going to do in just 24 hours from now. He was able to see the joy that was set before them. The question is, if we choose to believe what God says, 
if we believe it, I believe it strengthens us whilst we go through things and then we end up tasting the goodness of it. Or we allow the current day to overcome us. The prophet speaks a word. The Bible says faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. I, I, you know, there was a time, I remember um, uh, Brother Andrew, uh, he came to a midweek service. I was like, how you doing, Andrew? He goes, man, this has been a hard week. He says, I'm just glad to be in the house of God. So I know God will say something to me tonight. And I'm feeling pressure at that moment. Uh, <laughs> oh Lord, I hope this word helps him. <laughs> and he said, and then we had a prayer meeting on the Friday. And then he, he was bringing his prayer request. And he says, man, this week has been difficult. It's been a hard, hard week. But he says, you know, I was so glad that I can come to church. And I'm so glad I'm here right now. Because I know God will see me through it. And you know what? God saw him through the week. And he hasn't had a week like that week since. I tell you, we have more good days than we have bad, church. Faith is the ability to see it forward. It's to believe God in the moment. Can we hold on to his word? Can we believe it? Can we trust that Jesus is who he declares to be? That he does have a future for us? That he does have a hope for us? Psalms 30, verse 11 to 12. I'm going to bring this to a conclusion. You have turned for me. Oh, gosh. If I was like 20% more charismatic, I would have just ran around this room. You have turned for me my morning, my bad day. I was mourning. I was sad. I was feeling sorry for myself. You have turned for me. He's doing this for you. My morning into dancing. This is why I said I would have got up and just danced around, but I'm, I can't do it right now. I use too many camera phones. You know what I'm saying? People just take us some video recording that stuff. You have put off my sackcloth. Isn't that not what the king was wearing? That's like a rough material that itches and scratches the skin. It's, a, it's like an affliction of self through sorrow. He says, he's taken off my sackcloth and clothed me with gladness. Verse 12. It says, to the end that my glory may sing praise to you and not be silent. Oh, Lord, my God, I will give thanks to you forever. The word of the Lord for you this morning is that you just need to hold on in the bad day. Have faith that looks forward that you know that that bad day will end. Because I'm telling you, Jesus is going to bring a new day into your life. Let's bow our heads. Let's close our eyes in respect to God. Bad days don't last forever.